Okay, we're coming at you from Bennington, Vermont. We are on Avantoberfest 2019. We've been following along on our Etron road trip. Uh, hashtag Electric Avantoberfest on Instagram, where we're posting photos. Um, we are attending Avantoberfest 2019, which is a cool gathering of mainly Avant, mainly, mainly Audi owners uh, that starts in Lime Rock and makes its way up to Stratton Mountain, Vermont. We decided to do it this year in an e-tron since this was new to my garage and uh having a lot of fun with it brought the super 73 with us just in case we need more more uh, mobility like when we get up to uh we're saying tonight in manchester vermont where the charging station is not that close to the hotel nor that fast we were able to find a um rapid charger rapid ish 50 kilowatts which is uh electrify america which maxes out uh the speed at which the e trunk can charge is 150 kilowatts so this is about one third that uh, but it's still technically a um a rapid charger uh so uh cool and the other thing uh as we've been kind of like learning with this whole charging thing you come up with this term that's like zen charging stations meaning they're kind of relaxing makes you want to kill time and relax and enjoy explore that sort of thing we found one in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania at the Battlefield Welcome Center. We found one here in Bennington, Vermont, which is in a parking lot behind their township uh, building. And then if you just go down the street in front of that, down a ways, you get into the square of their town with a lot of cool little Vermont stores and like a gift shop about Vermont, a bunch of antique stores, a toy store, a bunch of restaurants we had. Um lunch while we waited for a bit so uh we're coming to the end end of our charge but we're not quite done yet uh with 50 kilowatt you get about a, a like a percentage point a minute so uh that's what uh we came in here with like 35 percent uh charge left we left the hotel this morning in poughkeepsie went to lime rock park met the other group and then from that point on we were driving somewhat spiritedly with our with the other avantoberfest people nothing crazy these are public roads after all but not exactly uh, trying to conserve battery charge and then at the end we had lunch or they had a lunch stop at a mountaintop where we went up and we lost about 15 uh, miles of charge or range rather going up the mountain and then we made most of that i think what it was about we made so we started at 71 on top of the mountain and ended up at 87 yeah and i think it was so we ended up 87 and i think we started the mountain at like 90 so we get got almost all of it back uh which was pretty impressive it speaks to the efficiency of the um of the the regenerative braking system on these things uh car is getting a lot of attention from other von toberfest attendees like it's uh obviously it's a bit of a novelty but but at the same time it's it's always interesting to me to see particularly car enthusiasts people who obviously own high performance uh in car or um internal combustion engine cars uh who are who are very curious about e-tron and and what it means and what electric mobility in general means so uh in case you've not attended the of Oktoberfest event, or you're wondering what this is? This is their 2019 insignia, and then a shout out to their sponsors. They give you these two decals to put on the car, so it's not like crazy, you know, crazy rallies like you see on the West Coast with supercar guys. But um, but it's cool to be able to spot the other ones in the group because that's the other thing. Being in New England, this is kind of Avant Central. You see a lot of wagons around. There's a golf sport wagon way over there in the background. Um, there's also a really sweet paint sample Porsche 911 over there, but this is uh, this is an Audi post, so I'm not going to fixate on that Porsche. The um, in any case, uh, we saw some comments on the conversation from our previous post, and the question was, what happens if you get stuck in traffic and you have a low charge? Uh, so we can relate to that today, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, we uh, basically the answer is this: the the, the car itself. Uh, I've not taken this particular car, this particular e-tron down that low in power, but um, we know folks at Audi who have, and basically what it does is it starts turning off systems and basically uh, reminding you in multiple ways that you need to uh, get to a charger. Um, so it'll start shutting down, for instance, the air conditioning or the radio, um, things that aren't necessarily needed. And we did find that because it's Vermont and it's cool up here. Uh, autumn is, is already upon us. You can see the trees changing. So we didn't really need AC. So we turned that on and gained a couple miles just by turning it off. You can see that immediately in your range. Um, so that's kind of cool. And then um, the other side of it is 
If you're sitting in traffic, let's say, dead stop in a car, you would probably turn the car off. You can obviously turn the e-tron off and it's not using any power. Um, or you can even just sitting there uh, running the, the, uh, the infotainment and what have you. It's a pretty low draw. So the next question is what happens, I guess, if you run out of power? Would that be a fair jump yeah. to make from her comment? So um, if you ran out of power, that's a different story. Obviously, the car is, is stuck, and as, so far as I know, I don't, I don't know that you have mobile uh, units going around putting a bit of charge on your car to, to get further, so uh, that would be a problem. But from my, my experience, the car will definitely let you know that you are close. So if you've got an exit coming up or you've got, you know, <laughs> you're able to get it out of the way. The other thing is, um, hey, Bill, can you open yes. up the, uh, the frunk? Yep. So the other thing that's cool about the e-tron is um, the the so hopefully we don't cause an error on the charging that might happen we'll see um we're almost charged up anyway but so if you open the frunk let's see if i can do this one-handed while i'm actually can you get it yeah it is uh about anywhere from 1300 to 2500 depending on the range and the battery Yeah, can you respond to that in a second? So, all right, so uh, back to this. Sorry, we had some people, always have people at all these stops asking us questions about the e-bike or about the e-tron. Um, but in any case, the front, as you can see here, there's a charger. Uh, the, I put the first aid kit in there, so pardon me, that's not Audi, but it was out of our tour rig. The, um, but you get a charger that'll go on any wall outlet, or um, you can either pop the regular wall outlet version off, and then you have a 240... Um, like a 240 no that's not it oh that's for yeah that's the wrong side the 240 that's fine so the 240 uh outlet if you're able to find it you'll be able to charge it, you know dependingly at home on my 240 i get nine kilowatts so it'll charge in about six hours on this you're probably looking at about 20 some hours so there's always a power you know there there i'm sure a power outlet somewhere near here that's that so if i have 20 hours to kill and i'm fully dead um it'll I can hang out for 20 hours and uh, and get a charge, or that would be from zero to full. I could probably just wait. A, you know, I know overnight we've seen we'll pick up like I don't know, 10 or 15 miles. So you would be able to get yourself to a charger. The trick with any electric is to be aware of where chargers are, and um, and plan well, I for those. Like being a ga in a gasoline powered car. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. But I mean, so that's uh that is the what we did this whole trip was plan. Basically, we knew where chargers were. We knew today, taking this drive, that if we uh, used a lot of juice going down, we could jump on the Massachusetts Pike and, Turnpike and go up and exit down uh, and charge at a rest stop. Uh, but we did the math, and we knew we'd be able to make it to Bennington if we didn't go. Uh, you know, we still got in here with, like, what, 35% charge. Um, it's when you get down below 50 that, you know, you start playing head games. But we still had – we probably had enough to get the whole way to Stratton. The only problem is nothing there is – quick charge and this is so that's why we wanted to get a full charge on it um back to the zen stops that's important because like last night it, it was awesome to be at electrify america it's very fast uh, especially in the first one where we were able to get the full amount of juice but the downside is you're you know you're at a walmart in the middle of the night and um that it, at least for us we were you know in the middle of the day i'm sure it would be fine but nighttime at walmart sometimes can give you a little a little uh iffy and and the one was and the one was fine so it's we kind of have a mixed meaning but but um you know if you're at a gas station you don't really want to spend time if i stop at a mini market i just want to fill my car and get out of there um some of the play charging stations i've stopped at like one of the walmarts last night i just wanted to get my car and get out of there as soon as i was done uh, but in cases like this or like the gettysburg military park like we stopped at a couple weeks ago um you know it I kind of want to stay here longer than this car would charge. We have a schedule to keep today, so we're not going to stay here much longer. But you could walk around for hours in this area. I know it's, you know, we're in the back of some buildings here, so you don't really see it. But there's a really quaint small town. Uh, Bennington is home to, like, one of the most expensive colleges in the country. So as you might expect, there's some rich kids here, and they, they're they able to sustain a, a very nice economy here in town. There's some great little businesses on Main Street. Um, and so it's just a cool place if my kids were with me they could run around and i wouldn't feel you know they, they could i would have a hard time getting into trouble um so i the, i think the trick is like finding stops like this that fam you familiarize yourself with 
we have, you know, this is the other point we were making, two things that we figured out earlier. One is we, we charged last night at the hotel. Um, we paid about $120, $130 for the room, and we got a free charge overnight. So if I'd have rolled in there with a low charge, had I filled up my car, it would cost me $75 to fill up the tank of my S5. If I'd have gotten $70 worth of free electricity, effectively, free mobility out of them, because uh, they didn't charge us for the charge. No. Um, so, you know, that takes $70 off, let's say, a hundred and even 150 you're now down to an $80 a night room, um, which makes it a lot easier to stay in a hotel like that. Um, so interesting to consider when you're on the road um, because you're not just talking about lodging, but you're talking about fuel and, and other things when you're on the road. So um, so that was cool. And um, trying to think if there was anything else we wanted to cover with this stop. Not that I can think of. I mean, oh, we're, we're going to stop well, up. Oh. One other thing. When, you, when you're charging, I've had this car now for about three weeks. And um, my wife uses it mainly. We've I've taken it on two road trips to Washington D.C. and both times I've had to stop at public chargers, usually Electrify America. And we figured out the Gettysburg Battlefield stop too, just to try and find a place that was relaxing. Um, but it, it, and the Electrify America one is a walk from Reston Town Center, so I, also a kind of relaxing place to stop. But where I'm going with this is. Uh, I've had this thing for three weeks. It's been charged many times. We've got um, about, at this point, over 2,500 miles on it. Uh, and I've only been at a public charger twice. Um, well, uh, other than this trip. This trip, we're obviously, we're on the road. So when you're on a road trip, you need to plan this stuff out. But day to day, you're not planning it out. You're, you're just charging it at night when you're asleep or you're charging at work. Uh, if you're lucky, like my wife, you get free charging at work. That's very nice. Um, but so, yeah, I... I Personally, I, I love my gas cars. I have one, and I it's my daily, but I would easily take this car, especially being on this trip. My range anxiety is kind of going away because it's, it's, we're pressed. It's so true because, I mean, my experience with the e-tron in July, uh, I was the first time I ever had, you know, it was different e-tron, e-tron and had experience with it. And I, range anxiety was just on my forefront, on my mind. This trip, after the first day, I didn't have any worries. Yeah. I mean, I knew that there would be some spots that we may have to spend uh, some time at, but you're never, I'm not going to say never, but it's going to be rare that you're going to run out of juice yeah. without finding a station. And the infrastructure is going to get better and better. Well, and the yeah. one other thing I think we noticed last night was, you know, had we been coming up here in the S5, we'd have chosen whatever the fastest route was to spend <laughs> as little time on the road as possible. Yep. Right. And so we would have just stopped for gas as needed because it's everywhere. And, um, and we'd have blasted up here and probably not reckon, you know, it would have been the same old, same old trip. And so with this time around, we knew going ahead, let's stop at, you know, Stroudsburg, Walmart, where there's an Electrify America. Let's stop at uh, was Newburgh. It? Newburgh, New York, where there's an Electrify America. And then we had some other ones on our radar like this and like the one we're going to hit in to, uh, Manchester tonight um, when we're at the hotel. But you know, so you're not going as direct in that you're kind of making your way from charging station to charging station. I don't think it added that much to our trip. It didn't like, add that much to trip, to the we, were, we weren't, you know, like you said, slamming it on the highway, just straight. Right. We and were and in, coming out of Stroudsburg, it took us up this kind of two-lane highway yeah. through the Poconos where we went some really beautiful little towns in like Del- Delaware Water Gap kind of area. And, and just things that you wouldn't normally find if you're mindlessly slogging down the highway as fast as you can. So... Um, I guess the days before the interstate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, for me, I, the the idea of discovery when I'm taking a road trip is kind of fun it because I, 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 you know, I get on a highway and all highways look the same. Basically, either in a desert, you're in the woods or whatever. But, but uh, otherwise, other than that, you're just rest stop to rest stop or gas station to gas station. Yep. And here, there's so much more personality to Bennington, Vermont, than there is to, you know, the rest stop on the side of the the turnpike. So. Um, Anyway, that's about it. We're gonna we're gonna end this one so we can finish up this charge and meet up with everybody in um, in Stratton. Stratton Mountain, Vermont, for the rest of the Avontoberfest folks. If we haven't missed them, we will post another live um, Facebook on the Audi Club North America page um, to show what's up there uh, and probably some of the same cars you've seen. But last year we saw different cars at different stops for people who join up in different localities. So um, we'll post again from there probably in the, in the next hour or two. Sounds good. Anyway, thanks again.